Muscle gain dieting made simple, video number nine, long-term muscle gain. I'm Dr. Mike from Science Periodization. Let's get into it. Last time in video number eight, we finished learning a few things, how to set up and execute a muscle gain phase, how to set up and execute a post-diet maintenance phase to make sure those gains stick, and how to do a mini cut to prime your body for another phase of training and gaining and eating and all that good stuff. But what if you want more than just another gain phase? What if you want tens of pounds of muscle growth? We have some pretty good tips for your long-term muscle growth aspirations, just to make sure that you have the right frame of mind to stay on that long path. Major rule before we start the tips is that you cannot rush the process, okay? Bunch of ways people like to rush the process, including going over the 0.5% of weight per week maximum rule. The dirty bulk. The dirty bulk makes you dirty if fat was dirt, right? So if you want to get super fat and unhealthy, I've done it a ton. I still have stretch marks from it. Fuck that. Okay, don't do that. It doesn't work. Going much over 16 weeks at a time. Okay, the question isn't can you sort of metabolically gain muscle for long durations like 20 or 24, et cetera, weeks? You can. Question is, can you, with appropriate training volume and intensity, consistently train harder and harder and harder for longer than 16 weeks without some kind of reduction in training volume, which would necessitate a reduction in calories so you're not just gaining pure fat? The answer to that is probably not. So anytime people tell me, oh yeah, man, muscle gain phase 30 weeks straight, and I'm like, uh, no breaks in there for maintenance or mini cut, they're like, nope, just going the entire time. I'm inclined to believe you're not training that hard. If you're training appropriately hard with appropriate volume, appropriate frequency, you probably need a break once every 16 weeks. Some people need a break much more frequently than that. Skipping maintenance and mini cut phases. Like, Fuck that, I'm not here to maintain, I'm here to gain, bro. Sweet, you'll get so fatigued that you won't be able to train hard or you'll get hurt. Skipping mini cuts is all fine and dandy if you wanna get really fat at the end of that process. If you don't wanna get fat, if you want a decent amount of muscle without as much fat or without any, mini cuts are a really good idea. So, three tips for long-term muscle gain. Granted that big major tip up front. First, perform each of the gain, maintain, mini cut phases. Sometimes you can expect a longer cut will be needed to renorm leanness. Like if over the last couple of these phases, yeah, you mini cut and you lost most of the fat, but not all that you gained. And now you're like pretty fat and just a mini cut won't cut it. Sometimes maybe you need an eight to 10 week classic fat loss phase to really get the weight off. And then after that, a little bit of an active rest, and then you restart the process. And sometimes you get really tired, really beat up, or you go on a vacation and a longer maintenance is needed, maybe six weeks, maybe eight. Maybe you get really bored and burnt out. You want to do some power lifting or strength training. Totally fine. Maintain that whole time and then get back into things. But generally speaking, it's going to be that triple cycle. Gain, maintain, mini cut, slash cut of some kind, and then restart and you go all the way up like that. There are many other ways to do this. I'd say it's probably one of the best. Maybe not the best, but it's the best one I know. Number two, continue to experiment with exercises and techniques and programs that work best. Okay. In addition to that, consider priority phases for various muscle groups. So you say, okay, this macro cycle, okay, this entire training phase, I am really hitting my chest and my back fucking hard. Shoulders, biceps, triceps, a little less hard, legs as hard as I've ever been hitting them. Then the next macro cycle, you switch to, okay, fucking arms and shoulders, really getting jacked. Chest and back, still going to grow a little bit, but not as much. Your body can really grow some muscles best when it focuses on them. How many muscles? As many as you can recover from. So if you can fucking hammer your entire body without systemic fatigue, do it. But most of you folks that get more advanced, you'll notice that if you're trying to train your whole body hard, it all kind of trains to, turns into dog shit. You're so tired from everything, you can't do it. Maybe to start taking one or two muscles, put them on the back burner, train everything else hard. When you become really advanced, you may only be able to train half or two thirds of your body really hard at a time and the other half to a third will need to be maintenance volume or minimum effective volume. Really kind of more advanced stuff, but hey, when you want long-term muscle gain, you'll have to do some advanced shit. If you really, really wanna know more of the nuances here, go to the Hypertrophy Made Simple series, click on that, it's one of our videos here at RP, and it'll really get you going on what kind of training uh, sort of we really talk about. We're talking about exercise selection and all this other stuff. Number three, huge one, expect your gains to slow. You may gain 15 pounds of muscle your first year. Your second year, you may gain, may gain only 10. Your third year, you may gain only five. Your fourth year, maybe only four, and then three, and then two, and then two, and then three, and then two, and stuff like that. People get fucking brutally demotivated from this. They miss their noob gains, and they just burn out. And a lot of those people don't get super jacked. But remember what I said at the end there. It's like, 
four and three and three and two and three and three and two and three. If we take that little string of threes and twos, that's five years. We're adding it all up as another 15 pounds of muscle. You have someone that quit or just didn't want to do the hardcore shit and they quit after five years of training and you have another person that quit after 10 because that person at five years, year six, they tried, but they're only gaining like two pounds of muscle. And they're like, fuck that. What are we going to do? Gain two pounds of muscle a year? I don't want that, any of that shit. The person who persevered for another five years, two and three and two and three add up to some shit. And all of a sudden they're 12 pounds of muscle bigger. And that's a big deal for most people. And you look at a guy that's super jacked, I'll tell you right now, the one most common unifying characteristic of people that are really jacked is they've been training for a long time, okay? Five years, 10 years, 15 years plus, if you keep going, not being discouraged by how slow the gains are coming, you make gains. You make amazing gains, it adds up over the long term, right? Remember that and all the size your genetics have for you will be yours. It's just gonna take a long time. Be patient, be realistic, Time is the big factor in success with muscle growth. Fat loss, you fuck anyone. Uh, unless you're morbidly obese, you can get lean in half a year. No big deal. And people think, like, oh, half a year of getting lean. That means half a year for muscle growth, right? Bullshit. It takes years and years and years. Consistency and hard training and time, right? It's like a witch's brew. You pour all them shits in, jack people come out. Now, what if you want to get exotically big? How does that change? What are the differences? That'll be our last video in the series. It'll be the next one next week. See you guys then.